The rate of living theory was proposed over a hundred years ago by Raymond Pearl. It was based upon the early work of Max Rivner. He says, faster an animal's metabolism is, the shorter its lifespan will be as a result. Sometimes this is thought as being the number of heartbeats in a life. This is an accurate view of what actually happens. When we're talking about the lifespan in this context, we're not thinking about how long an average animal lives for. Many things can actually dramatically shorten an animal's lifespan, including things like starvation, predation, disease, and conflict. So looking to see how long a healthy, well-fed, secure animal lives before it basically dies at old age. The key here is what's known as the maximum lifespan. If you survey enough creatures of a particular species, plot their lifespan on a graph, it's relatively easy to work out where the maximum lifespan of the animals would be, even if none of the kind of the animals surveyed actually quite reach that age. However, this isn't truly accurate since some species of captive animals far outlive their wild cousins, mainly due to old age resulting in these creatures being less effective either as hunters or becoming easier prey for hunters. Either way, shortening the maximum lifespan for wild animals and extending it for captive animals in ideal conditions. Additionally, also been shown that animals such as rats, which are put on a restrictive diet, there's actually less food to eat than they would ideally like to eat, live considerably longer than those allowed to eat as much as they want. However, we can make some adjustments for this to compensate. Let us appear to be first some correlation between the basal metabolic rate of the animal and the maximum lifespan of the animal. Some adjustment for the size of the animals involved. However, there's also some significant differences, both within the same species, and also when comparing one species with another. Now, Max Rubner looked at different species of mammals and combined the maximum lifespan of the metabolic rate of those same animals to calculate their lifetime energy potential. Now, this was relatively constant across the various species he examined. This work was furthered by Raymond Pearl, who looked at fruit flies. In these experiments, he showed that fruit flies were actually kept at different temperatures, the lifespans also varied the result. He concluded that the change in lifespan was explained by their different metabolic rates at the different temperatures, then in turn altered their lifespan. Raymond Pearl also did many other investigations in factors which alter lifespan, then he concluded over a hundred years ago, whilst moderate drinking didn't shorten lifespan in humans, smoking actually did. However, Lifespan in humans was directly tied to metabolic rate. We expect to see a correlation between sleeping and lifespan. Whilst we sleep, our metabolic rate slows down dramatically. So if you spend more of your time sleeping, you should theoretically live longer. However, it's been shown that the length of time spent sleeping in humans has actually no impact on your lifespan. So whether you sleep for six hours a night or nine hours a night, it won't directly alter your lifespan. Now, other issues come up with things like flying animals, like birds and bats, due to their activity at a relatively high metabolic rate for their size. They don't have a correspondingly short lifespan. So the metabolic rate isn't the only key to maximum lifespan. What else might be going on? We have to look at how aging actually leads to death. As our bodies age, so do our cells. And whilst our body creates new cells all the time, it doesn't create them from scratch. Instead, they're created by existing cells, which of course are also aging. These cells over time accumulate damage, can lead to conditions such as cancer, also mean eventually accumulate so much damage they cease to function properly, and they do so, and too many cells do. We age, then eventually we die. Some of this damage is due to areas in replication of DNA or things like radiation and physical injury. However, some of it actually may be due to oxygen. This may be where the key with metabolism and lifespan actually comes in. Oxygen is, of course, essential in human and most other animals' metabolisms. Normally, this oxygen is bound up with other elements whilst it's in the body. However, occasionally, the oxygen is only partially bound to other elements and still has the ability to react with other elements or chemicals. These reactive oxygen species can disrupt and damage the cell by a process called oxidative stress. 
This stress can damage DNA, lipids and proteins within the cell as well as the cell membrane itself. Stress can be reduced by um, antioxidants in animals but if the stress becomes too great it can result eventually in cell death or to a level of damage that's so great the body itself removes the cell because it's too damaged to function properly. So the oxygen we need for life may actually end up killing us. It's possible this link with oxygen from cell death is why there's also an apparent link between metabolism and maximum lifespan, which led to the rate of living theory.